Should I keep trusting in God? Um, we wonder why we go through difficult times in our lives. Uh, we can't quite wrap our minds around what's happening. Sometimes we even wonder if God knows what's going on in our lives. I want you to be rest assured he knows what's going on in your life. He knows everything about you. He knows the trial and tribulations that you're going through right now. He knows the storms that you're going through right now in your life. But I want you to remember this. Trouble don't last always. Storms don't last all way. If you're having a storm all the time, something is wrong. You got to see the sunshine every now and then. And God will bring the sunshine. But as hard as things may be in our lives, we have the promise and hope that one day we will look back and see that God had a beautiful plan all along. Just as gold must go through fire before becoming refined to its most beautiful state, so must we go through trials and difficulties to become refined like him. Who is him? Jesus. I don't know about you, but I cannot say that I always find joy in the trials that I go through. You know, the Bible says count it all joy. Sometimes when things are hitting you from every side, you're trying to wonder, what does the word joy mean? You can't find it. But it makes you think, where and why am I going through this? But I can find joy in how God proved himself even more trustworthy as I'm going through my trial. So, if you're finding yourself in the middle of a mess, trust him with all your heart. And you will be able to say, my soul looks back and wonder how I got over. Have you ever wondered how you got through some things? How you got through some things without losing your mind? How you got through some things without losing stuff? That's because God is trustworthy. What, 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 what is trust? What is trust? Trust is a charge or duty imposed in faith or confidence of some relationship. I don't know about y'all, but I have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I can put my trust and my faith in him. Because I know he's going to bring me out every time. Even when it seems like I'm in a storm longer than I'm supposed to be, I still have the joy knowing that he's going to bring me out. Uh, uh, do I have anybody in the audience or anybody watching that know God will bring you out? Uh, you, you've been in some tough stuff. You've been in some tough stuff, but now you're seasoned enough to know that He's going to make a way somehow. He can make a way out of nowhere. I told you all that on Sunday. He'll make a way out of nowhere. When you get between a rock and a hard place, he will make a way. That's the kind of God I serve. That's the kind of God I serve. That's why I don't worry. That's why I don't worry no more because I know he's going to make a way. So let's look at reasons we can trust God. Reasons we can trust God. Number one, the reason you can trust is because he has a record of keeping his word. He has a record of keeping his word. Okay, why? Okay, look at Numbers 23 and 19. It will tell you why. It said, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man, that he should repent. He hath, hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? <laughs> he has a record of keeping his word. How many in here know that he has a record of keeping his word? Have you ever asked him for something? And he kept his word. He will keep it. What he says he will do, he's going to keep it. What he says, listen, what he says can already be uh, considered done. That's why I told you in the beginning of the year, it's already done. He already spoke it over your life. It's already, if God said it, 
oh, wait a minute, but the government can change it. Uh, my family can change it. My friends can change it. No, if God said it, that settles it. It's all, I dare y'all to say it's already done. It's already, done. already done. I told you, and I keep telling you, I told you again Sunday, God is somewhere in the future making it happen. And you're worried about today. And you're worried about what the devil is doing to you. See, I found out the other day. I know, you know, it might seem simple, but I found out. The devil wants to be like God, but he can't. I'll tell you why. That's because, see, God is everywhere all the time. The devil has to have demons to accomplish some of the stuff he wants to do to you. But God is with everybody at every time. So you ain't got the way. You got to trust in him. I don't care. Listen, I don't care. I don't care how big or small it is. You got to learn how to trust in him. See, and what I found out is all of us, have different things in our lives. You might need $100. I might need $100,000. But you got to trust them. You got to trust them. I told you the other week, get them out the box. Start trusting in him. So if God said it, that said it. Listen, listen what Solomon, de Solomon declared in 1 Kings 8 and 56. Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised there hath not failed one word of his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. Again, if God said it, that settles it. In other words, listen, there's sometimes people tell you, I got you. And they fail. But if God said he got you, he got you. He promised it. He kept his promise. He always keeps his promise. Something about his promises are what? Yay and amen. Right. That's why if you go all through the Bible, you will see promises. Got to understand that. But you listen, you cannot have the promise if you don't trust him. You got to trust him. Got to trust him. So remember this. God has a record that is good. I got something for you, too. If he tell you your enemies are cursed, they're going to be cursed. <laughs> See, some people think the only thing God does is good stuff. And I'm not saying he does bad stuff, but good stuff. Meaning, oh, he blessed me with this, he does this. No, 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 no. He'll make your enemy your footstool, too. But you got to trust in him. Let me move on. Number two, God's nature is faithfulness. God's nature is faithfulness. One of the fruits or characteristics of his spirit is faithfulness. Because his very nature is faithfulness, he can only prove himself faithful. He will not let anything people can do or any circumstances you are facing come in the way of proving himself faithful. 2 Timothy 2 and 13. It declares this. Even if we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Even if we are faithless, he will remain faithful. For he cannot deny himself. Mm. Listen, it's not his nature to be unfaithful. He's not like some of our friends. He cannot go against his word. And if he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Even if he has to swear by himself, he's going to do it. He's faithful. Always been faithful. The unfaithful is us. God, if you do this, I'll, I'll, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then we slip again. But his faithfulness lets us come back again. His mercy lets us come back. His grace lets us come back again. Because he's faithful. He's faithful. 
Mm-hmm. I would say that in the form of the Lord, I am the Lord God, and I change not. So whatever he said in the beginning, whenever this word is written, it will remain that, and it will accomplish that no matter what happens, no matter. Bishop said something some, some years ago. He said, if God has a blessing for you, you can't even stop it. That's right. Your enemies can't stop it. No demon, no angel can stop what God has for you if he said it. That's right. Not going to come back void. Mm -hmm. As we as being as being as human as we are, and we look at our situation sometimes more than we look at the faithfulness of God. Um, even when he was dealing with the father of faith, Abraham, they laughed at God. God gave them a plan. He said, by this time next year, your wife Sarah is going to have a child. Mm -hmm. And they tried to alter what God said he was going to do. That's when his wife Sarah said, pick the handmaid. Pick the handmaid. Trying to change what God said he was going to do. And God came back and said, he's not your, that's not your. That's not the air that I gave you. And you know, you if, if you think about it, when they did that, it messed up their plan. Messed up. Messed up. Not his plan. Not his plan. Their plan. God said he's going to do something. He's going to do it. Well, there's a whole bunch behind that with that, with that uh, Abraham story. You know what? Time has nothing to do with it. Mm. Condition has nothing to do with it. But God's word is sure. That's right. What he said he's going to do is against time, it's against conditions, it's against environment. But if he gives you a sure word and you can believe it, he's going to do what he said he's going to do. He cannot go against his word. He cannot, there you go, he cannot deny himself. So if God slipped up and said he's going to do something for you, he can't take it back. That's right. You know, let me, let me, have you, when, when those of you that have kids, if you ever told them, I'm going to do this for you, they remember that. Yeah. They don't forget. They get an elephant mentality. That's how God is. He don't forget. If he said it, he's going to do it. He's going to make it happen. Number three, he will never leave us or forget us. He will never leave us or forget us. He made us. He put breath in us. And he cannot forget us. His word promises in Isaiah 49, 15 and 16. Listen to this. That even though a mother might forget the child she bore, he will not be able to forget us. Let me say that again. That even though a mother might forget the child she bore, he will not be able to forget us. See, I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. He said, he has tattooed <laughs> you in the palm of his hands. And, you know, no, no, no. and that's why we say he got the whole world in his hand. So whoever he's dealing with, he sees you in the palm of his hand. He comes and rescue you with the palm of his hand. That's where Psalm 91, he, come, he protects you with the palm of his hand. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. People will leave you. They will forsake you. Your mother or father will forsake you, but God will never Never will he forsake because he has us all in the palm of his hand. Them some big hands, ain't it? That means he has a lot of responsibility. He he's not like he's not like 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 it said right here. A mother might even forget about her child, but he can't. It didn't say he won't. It said he's not able to forget you. In other words, he's always. We are always on his mind. Always. His consistency makes Jesus possible. 
Mm. We can always find comfort in him. No matter where far we, we stray, we can always seek him while he may be found. Because mm -hmm. he's always consistently where you left him. Say that again. He's always consistently. He's consistently where, where he you left us. Know, where you left oh, no. him. I thought, okay. So. Go ahead. I'll be here when you come back. Yeah. That's right. And you will be back. <laughs> Believe me. You will be back. That's why I tell people, you're trying to take matters into your own hands. Hands, your palms are not big enough to handle the problems in your life. Y'all never had problems to bombard you? I mean, one after another, just keep coming. Just like, where in the world? Why is this happening? Right. Why? Why is this happening? But he's faithful. He pulls you out every time. Every time. Number four, God knows your needs better than you do and before you do. Psalm 139 and 3 says, he is the maker of your soul and he is familiar with all your ways. You can't hide nothing from him. He's the maker of your soul and he knows all your ways. How much does he know? How much does he know? He knows so much that Luke 12 and 7 says that he knows the number of hairs on your head. Oh, let me see. Yeah. So y'all looking at me, right? Y'all saying, oh, you bald. No, but there's some hair there. Somewhere. He knows. He knows. Any beach you go to, he knows how much sand. He can count each, what do you call it, pebble, grain of sand. He knows. See, what you got to get in your head. This is what you got to get in your head. He made us. He knows all about us. So when you go to the doctor and they say, oh, you have a problem with this or that. God already knew. He already knew. But he's waiting for you to be faithful and so he can heal you. He's waiting for you to call on him so he can heal you. He knows. Listen, Psalm 23 says that the Lord is our shepherd. We don't have to want for nothing. In other words, he's our feeder. Shepherds feed the sheep. God is feeding you right now. You know what? Let me start right there. I said something Sunday and you posted it, right? I said, God is going to allow your enemies to see you eat. I didn't know what I said until after I said it. God is going to allow your enemies to see you eat. Their mouth going to be running water. He's going to allow it to happen. But that's not the only thing. Once he does that, see, he has to nourish you. That's why he feeds you, because you're in the valley. So he has to get you back up to a certain point so he can pick you up and take you out the valley. Anybody want to eat in front of their enemies? Oh, I'm going to get a big meal. The more enemies you got, the more food you got to sit there and eat. I'm going to get a big meal. That's what I'm going to do. But he gonna, he, he's going he's gonna to let them see you eat. They laughing at you. They thought it was over for you. Uh, now they, they, they send you like, why, how, how, how does Pastor Long keep going? Because the Lord is at my table. Yes. He's at my table. They don't understand it. He's at my table. And guess what? Nobody but me and him can sit at the table. It's only two spaces at the table. Two. You, you, you. When Jesus prepared the table, he told them, give me a table for two. Each individual in here is just you and God at that table. Yeah. And listen, listen, this is how I like to look at it. So, so when you're at the table, 
and it's just you and him, that means you have his undivided attention. You can cry to him. You can tell him what you need at the table. Some people ain't got to the table yet. I've been sitting at the table for a long time, but now he done took me out of the valley. And guess where he took me? In the promised land. Took me out of the valley. I'm out of it. Anybody else out of the valley? You got to be honest with you. But see, this is a good thing. Even if you're in the valley, I'm telling you, you're at the table. Keep eating. When you start eating, your enemies are going to get jealous. They're going to say, why well, he got steak and we over here eating hot dog? Now, I said, y'all don't get it. See, I have an imagination. Pastor, another thing, when you're in the valley, you're still in his hands. That's right. You're walking See, through the valley. He's still right, right there. With you. Right. And then I told you, I, I told you, I heard my dad preach a sermon. Yeah, though I walked through the valley. And he said, he said, walk, don't run through it. Don't try, don't try to, to escape the valley on your own. Mm-hmm. There are some pitfalls in the valley. Mm-hmm. Only he can guide you around them. That's why you gotta walk. Uh 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 when there, when 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 there are wars, there's something called landmines. <laughs> you got to be careful. And see, in some, in some countries, uh, 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 for instance, the army might hire somebody from where that country is to guide them through the landmines. What am I saying? God is guiding me. That's why I got to walk. If I run, I might lose a leg. If I run, I might lose my life. I got to walk through the valley. Don't try to speed up your process. Don't try. I know how it feels sometimes. Like, I got to get out of this. Oh, I can't take it no more. Oh, But just remember this. He's with you. God is with you. Let me move on. Number five. God is not surprised or baffled at your situation. God is not surprised or baffled at your situation. There is nothing new under the sun. God has seen it all, heard it all, and knows it all. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 declares, What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. Ain't nothing new. God's seen it all. As a matter of fact, he's up here, like I told you. You back here, he already know the plan that he has for you to get through, to get to this point. He's seen it before. Can't nothing trick him. Nothing surprises him. Nothing at all. He knows. He knows all. He sees all. He hears all. Some of y'all better watch what you're thinking because he knows what you're thinking. Have to be careful. Have to be very careful. He knows. He knows the people that smile in your face. And he knows when they're going to stab you in your back. He knows. He knows. But see, something about God sometimes. These trials and tribulations are to make you tougher, stronger, because they're going to be more. See, but I believe that you can get to a point where you'll be like, "Ah, God got this. I'm fine. The mind of Christ is peace. That's right. So when when he begins to bring you up to his level of understanding to a degree, the things that used to make you get anxious mm. doesn't have the same effect. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like I could be on the sideline watching a game. Something happened, an uh, interception or whatever happens, a long run breaks, and we're cheering, we're excited. Offensive coordinator is in the booth. And he saw it before the play even snapped. That's right. Like, yep, about to happen. 
<laughs> and he'll just call it out without any type of emotion because he saw it long before it occurred. So it's like, as long as you grow in the mind of Christ and the way you think gets elevated, the stuff that used to make you excited, you see it coming before it even happens. I hear that a lot when I talk to older saints. Oh, yeah. They'll call it before it even comes. Like, yeah, well, time. Time. There you go. Time. Told you it was going to happen. That's right. Listen, because God can't be shaken by anything, we can go to him with all our cares and concerns. Psalm 139 and 5 tells us, he hems us in behind and before and places his hand over us. You want me to read it again? He hems us in behind and before and places his hand over us. That means, man, y'all got the best security protection. No, I told you how big his palms are. It's on top, right? Oh, well, come on now. Uh, hey, we talking about God. He's surrounding you. That's why. That's why. That accident you were supposed to be in got you covered. Who's that say we got you covered? Is that all states? No. You're in good hands. Oh, now we're going to change that. I'm, I'm in good hands. Why? Because I got God on my side. Covers you. Covers you. 360 degrees. 360 degrees. Got you. <laughs> the fact of the matter is nothing about our situation will shock God. Some people think, I'm going through this. Oh, God must didn't even know this was going to happen. What? Oh, I know that shocked Jesus. No. No, 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 no. In that knowledge, we can trust him to be our rock, our firm, unwavering foundation. Yes, that's why I can say by myself, I know for me, I can say he is my rock and my salvation. My rock and my salvation. Hard to crack a rock. Got to keep hitting it. Can't crack that one. Upon this rock, I will. And the, that's right. Can't do it. Number six. I'm almost done. Nothing is too hard for God. Somebody, somebody right now, tell me something that's too hard for him. Oh, I know what the first thing you're going to say. Oh, God can't lie, but I got a scripture for you to show you where he uh, told the angel. <laughs> Y'all laughing. God can't lie. If he was to, would you know it? That's right. That's right. God cannot lie. Jeremiah, 32 and 17, puts it in these words. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Nothing. Name it. Name something. There you go. Oh, God can't heal counsel. What? Oh, uh, uh, let me see. Oh, the doctor said I would never have any kids. Oh, yeah. I remember, and I, I, I'll tell you this right now. I remember there was a, 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 a young lady that went to our church, and she came to Bishop, and she said, said I can't have no kids. God prayed for her. I, I have proof. She has about at least six kids now. And I know him. One of them is a doctor. He takes care of the accident. That's what she do. And the other daughter works there. And there's a granddaughter that works there. So there's God can do anything. Anything. I'm about to lose my house. Oh, oh man, this 
They were saying, if I don't pay this, they're going to take my house. And God can give you the house. God can give you the deed. He can do that. See, we, we, we don't think God can do those types of things. All we know is the world system. Get it 30 years and pay it. God ain't into that. He's not into that. See, a couple things here. You have not because you ask not. God, give me a house. No, tell him. That when you, like I told y'all Sunday, he gives us the victory. We ain't got to pay for no victory. He gives it to you. You don't have to do nothing. He gives us the victory through him. Same thing. He'll give you houses and lands that you didn't, uh, houses you didn't build. He does that. He will make a way. The Egyptians were behind the Israelites. Mountains on each side and the Red Sea in front of them. And they were like, how are we going to get out of this? Don't ever wonder how God's going to get you out. Let him do his job. Your job is to just keep trusting and having faith in him. I told you Sunday, God, if he have to take you through a crack, he's going to get you out. If he have to take you through a window, see, all of us want to go out the door, but he might take you out. Oh, he might take the roof off this place. And I found out something the other day. Listen to this. Remember the man that they had to lower down? You better find yourself some real friends. That's what you got to do. Those was real friends. They said, look, 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 no. He was probably, I can hear him now. Oh, I don't want to bother y'all. I'm just stay like I am. No, no, no. We're going to get you in. Got to have real friends in your life. I'm tired of fake people, man. Fake Christians. Tired of it. You got to have real people in your life, in your life that you can, you can depend on. We're going to get you in there. But it's too crowded. Ah, no, nah, don't worry about it. No, we're going to get you in there. Because we know if we get you in there, you're going to get your healing. You're going to walk out with us. My Lord. No. Be careful. You got people that's uh, praying for your destruction. Tell God to give you discernment to know who your real friends are. Some people will only be your friends when you're giving. When you're giving them money and stuff. The moment you tell them no, they're going to talk about you. They're going to chastise your name. Let me say it again. I don't know who I'm talking to in here. I don't know who I'm talking to on the stream. Find yourself some real friends. And let me, give you, let me back it up by saying that there's no friend like the lonely Jesus. No. Not one. But, but, but he'll give you some good friends. That's why. Before they, we're going to get you. We're going to let you down in there. We're going to tear the roof off this place. See, your friends are hanging there with you. See, now you got to imagine where I'm going. When things get hard, they hung in there with them. It wasn't easy getting that guy up on the roof. They be there with you. Good friends. Find yourself some good friends. It's not a question mark about nothing too hard for God. It's not a question mark. It's not an exclamation point. It's a period. In other words, it's a fact. Nothing. Y'all say that with me. You got to say, nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too hard for God. Anybody that's listening to me in here right now, you're going through something and you think it's over for you, turn it over to God. Give it to him completely. Stop dabbing in it. Give it to him. I don't care what it is. If it's a family problem, give it to him. Marital problem, give it to him. Financial problem, give it to him. Nothing too hard for God. Nothing. See, that's because we're looking at God like he's a man. God is not a man. Which means he doesn't need our help to fix it. No, he doesn't. He doesn't need our help at all. But do you know how you can help yourself? By turning over to him and giving him thanks. Be ungrateful and see what happens. Some of y'all 
You've seen the hand of God get you out of certain situations, and you're still not thankful. When is his mercy going to run out? Got to be careful. It's nothing too hard for him. Let me drive that home. There's somebody that's watching this, listening this. Ah, I don't know. I've been going through this sickness for a long time. Have you completely given it over to him? Is there any doubt in your mind? Had to think about it. Oh, some of them say, well, I'm going to die with this. Let me, let me show you something. I heard another minister say that, another pastor. All this going on in our world, all this you're seeing on TV, all this they're saying is going to happen to you if you do this or if you don't do this and you don't do that. Listen, nobody, nobody, let me look at y'all, nobody, knows when you're going to die but God. He is the only one that can appoint that. Amen. Think about it. The only one. Have you ever had an appointment? Anybody? An appointment? A hairdresser appointment, ladies? Uh, a doctor's appointment? A job interview an appointment? And you was late. Have you ever been late for your appointment? Listen. The appointment that God has for you when you're supposed to die, you ain't going to miss it. You're going to be on time. Can't nobody change it. It's an appointment. Got to. Can't get around it. So when you see people die, Oh, they died in their 20s. They had an appointment. They had to keep it. And you didn't have to call them 24 hours and tell them I ain't coming. 24 hours before time. You couldn't get out of that one. Some of you all that I, I know, some of y'all got sick with this virus and thought you was going to die. No, it wasn't time yet. It wasn't your appointment. It wasn't your appointment. But that's what they want you to think. You keep, you know, stop looking at the news all the time. Turn on some cartoons or some I Love Lucy or something. <laughs> some of them trying to keep up with the death toll and all that stuff. See, I don't want to get started in here. How many people died from heart attacks during that time? You don't know, do you? The truth of the matter is in 2017, 18, and 19, and 20, the same amount of people, around the same amount of people died every year. But they're not pushing it. Now, hold on. Put your mask on. Oh, you don't need your mask. Oh, put your mask on. No need. Double it up. Huh? No, they don't know. I don't know. I mean, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, but powers and and y'all got to understand this too. Just like we serve God, there are people that serve the devil. You got to remember that the devil is the what prince of the air. God gave me, okay, you handle the ass. <laughs> That's why, I, I, before, when Daniel was praying, they were blocking it. They weren't letting the prayer get out, so they were blocking it. They had to, the angels had to fight through it. I told the church a couple weeks ago, if something happened to me, don't let them tell you it was COVID. You get in an accident. Oh, yeah, he died from COVID. No, he had an accident. He flipped his car over. But it was his appointment. Ah, there you go. Right, stop. Listen, listen. Oh, man. I'm talking about trust. 
How many of y'all trust God with everything you got? Y'all, no, answer me. Answer me. Answer me. I would not sit up here and be a pastor if I didn't trust in God. Somebody said the other day, pastor said, take the vaccine and trust in God. Huh? Read Psalm 91. That's it right there. It's there. That's where your protection is. Oh, and then put your mask on, take your mask off. Oh, now people that have been vaccinated are spreading the virus. Oh. Help me out. Help me out. Something ain't right. Wake up. These are the end times. I want to talk about that so bad. I want to go to Revelation so bad. Oh. Mm. These are the end times. Let me say this to you. I, as a man of God and a pastor, I do not believe that what's going on now is the Antichrist. I believe it is preparing us for the Antichrist. Because by the end of the third chapter, I'll be caught up. I'm gone. I don't care what happened after that. Just let me get to the end of the third chapter. And guess what? I'm probably a couple of verses from it. That's the way I think. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. I'm trying to tell you, be careful. Careful. Listen, I'm a pastor. I'll say this. It's your choice. That's how I always say it's your choice. Whether you do it or not. And you're not bad because you did it. But from what I'm hearing, it don't matter if you do it or don't do it. I wish that. Do, do anybody, do you, sorry, Mike, do y'all know any scientists that we can bring in on in here? On? Because, I mean, if I'm walking around with this all day, well, I went to, to, to get treatment. They put me on the bicycle. And I was like, I had to, like, pull it to get my breath. Somebody help me out. Maybe I might be wrong. But your body produces carbon monoxide too. So if you got this on, where's the carbon monoxide going? Thank you. Don't, I'm, just, I'm just not here. I'm not preaching a sermon. Just making you think. It's not right. Let me go before they take us off of Facebook. Because... They all in agreement that anybody that talks against their agenda. Let me stop. Ah, okay. There's nothing impossible for God. Nothing. Nothing too hard for him. That's why I can say he has never failed me yet. Never failed me. Never. What man says is impossible. God makes it possible. He controls the universe. He makes it possible. Let me give you this one. Number seven. He promised consistency. He promises consistency. The Lord will never change. He has been the same through all the ages. He will not change his mind. Hebrews 13 and 8. Somebody said it earlier. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I always say it this way. God doesn't change. We change. Things don't go our way. I'm gone. I'm leaving church. I ain't coming back. No. No, no, no. That could be your test. I'm going to be honest with you. 
during my Christian walk, I failed some tests. If he was degraded, it'd be an F on it. But he let me take the test again. I, now I got a C. I'm passing. <laughs> I didn't say I had an A. Because sometimes it makes me think, we say, love everybody. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Help me. There you go. Help me. I don't care how hard you study for that one. It's just hard. Because people will treat you mean, treat you wrong, make you, but you got to love them anyway. What I tell you, Bishop used to always say, love the hell out of us. It works, too. I've seen that happen. I've seen people change. You keep being nice and loving them, then they change. You love that hell out of them. Look what James 1 and 17 says. It says, he gives us every good and perfect gift according to our needs. And he does not change like the shifting shadow. Consistency. Consistency. You want to, I'm going to tell you what. Who's the oldest person in this room? Is it Queen Joanne? Queen Joanne? Queen Joanne? Let me show you how consistent he is. He woke you up every morning for 79 years. Consistent. He has a track record. Has a track record. Consistency. The truth is, he can't change. I believe in some situations God was like, I want to change, but I already put that out. I can't do it. Can't change. Can't do it. It would, be, it would go against his very nature if he changed. God cannot change. Whatever he said or whatever he did, he cannot change. Remember that. If something happens in your life, you can never say God did that if he said differently. He can't change. Remember, we can trust this God of all gods. How many can trust this God of all gods? He's our loving, faithful, heavenly Father. We can trust him with our needs, our wants, our fears, our sorrows, our tears. Yes, we can trust him with it all. He's almost like Comcast. Give me the bundle. <laughs> God said, give me the bundle. Trust me with everything. Trust him when you're on the mountaintop. Trust him when you're in the valley. Trust him when everything is going right. Trust him when everything is going wrong. Trust him. Got to trust him. And tonight, those that are watching, those that are here, do not let this night go by without making up in your mind and say these words. Y'all ready? Got to say them. I, I will trust, will trust in, the in the Lord until I die. Until I die. Say it again. I, I will trust, will trust in the Lord, in the Lord until, I until I die. Now, do you mean that? So, guess what? Since you mean it, some of y'all got to make some changes. Got to make some changes. I don't care if you are an elder in the ministry, all the way to a doorkeeper. Got to make some changes. Got to see. You got to put your money where your mouth is. That's why you got to press your way to church. I mean, we get sick and tired sometimes. You got to press. Press. See, but see, I know some people, told you, they get an eyelash in their eye and they stay home until they get out. No, I'm talking about, and if, as long as you got a reasonable amount of strength and breath in your body, you're supposed to be here. 
the truth of the matter is, I know everybody ain't built the same way, but there's plenty of times I'm here and don't feel like it. You got to get that determination. You got to push. You got to push through. Some people can't push through nothing. They can't even tear a piece of paper. Can't do nothing. But you got to trust in God with all thine heart. Can't, you can't go by your own understanding. If you went by your own understanding, you will stay in the state that you're in. Always be in that state. You have to trust in him. Let him lead and guide you. He will direct your path. He will direct your path. He'll direct it spiritually. He'll direct it financially. He'll direct it in the natural. That's why sometimes people, I mean, I don't, like, don't play this cheap. Sometimes you get ready to go a certain way. Some say, don't go that way. See, people think God's voice is like, I said, my friend, or whatever, my child. No. It's up here. It's in the mind. You'll hear something saying, don't go that way. Or it'll tell you, see, oh, my God, what's going on in our world? You better have God talking to you. Don't go in that store. Something happened this week, didn't it? Somewhere, somebody went somewhere and, oh, Pentagon. Some, some people here, I think, work near the Pentagon or in the Pentagon or something. Got to be careful. At the bus stop, right? How many in here take public transportation? You don't know who you're getting on the bus with. And listen, this is the thing. Sometimes God will make you miss your bus. Sometimes you'll get up late and don't go to work a certain way. Then you'll be like, oh, it was a terrible accident at exit 13. The other day that happened. And some of us, man, all this traffic, it don't make no sense. Hey. Now you sit in the car and play your gospel music. Praise God while you're in the car. Got to. You don't know. Let him direct your path. When you start trying to make your own path, it always fails. I know people tried to make their own path in all areas of life. We found out the hard way. I'm going to say this, and people are going to be like, why you always say that? God will not give you nothing and let you lose it. Can't, can't happen. It can't happen. He don't work that way. So when people come and say, Pastor, God bless me with this car. Don't come to me the next week and say, the snatch man got it. You got it on your own. That's right. That's right. I got to set out. No. You think God want to see you living in the street? No. And I know what some of y'all are saying. Well, maybe that's my test. Uh-uh. No. No, 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 no. It's not your test. That's your, excuse me, but that's, most of the time, it's our stupidity. You got to understand that. See, you got to trust in God so much. And I'm, 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 I'm going to show you because you got to trust in him so much. If you lose your job, and I, I thought about it, I, I say it all the time, all during the pandemic, I don't know of anybody that lost their house that's in this ministry, their car. It looked like everybody's still eating good. <laughs> Even if you're eating hot dogs every day, you're eating. But I will say this. You know of some people that are not in church, not committed to God, and they're struggling, 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 struggling. Then you got some church folk that you see that are struggling, 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 struggling. I'm going to tell you why. Because some of them are not tithers. I will tell you this. There are some people 
that haven't tithed since the pandemic. There are some people that were gone for eight months, nine months. When they came back, they started tithing again. Y'all, y'all catch that? What did I say? When they came back, because they think it's a visual thing. No. No, no, no. It is a visual thing. God sees all, knows all. You at home, there are several ways that God has given us the ability to accept tithe and offering. I don't trust Cash App. Okay, call it in. We'll write it down. That's right. Oh, I don't trust PayPal. That's right. But but you pay all your bills online. Come on, man. Let's keep it real up in here. But you don't trust the church. Some people, I'm tell, I know what the mindset of people are. Well, every time I go to scripture, the air or the heat is on, lights is on, look at that new display they got, look at this and look at that. You know why it happens? Because I'm following God's instructions. And even if you don't give, this ministry is still blessed. You ain't hurting nobody but yourself. I'm trying to tell you. You can say what you want about me. You can say what you want about ministry. But you ain't hurting nobody but yourself. I don't go this far. If I, as the pastor and the man of God of this church, take all the tithe and offers, go somewhere and gamble it all away, it ain't your problem. Because the Bible says when you pay your tithe and all, he's going to bless you. That's what you got to do. You got Don't trust in me. I mean, you got to have a little bit of trust in me because I'm your man of God. But you don't trust in me more than you trust in God. You got to understand that. See, some people don't understand that. See, see, if I, if, if I mess up right now, y'all hang on to God. You got to understand that. Hang on to God. It ain't me. You got to see the God in me. As your leader, you got to understand that. Some people, they, they see, and see, when you got a pastor, I'm going to talk about myself like me, that will bend, but he won't break. I'm telling you, you better, you better thank God. I'm telling you, because there's some rascals out here. Believe me, it's some show enough rascals out here. It's in there. Ah, we talked about it. They, for gain. It's in there. And listen, I'm like this. If I, uh, if nobody, let me say this the right way. And I'm, I'm setting in you all seat. You're supposed to take care of your man of God. That un- the truth of the matter is, I'm the heartbeat of the ministry. All pastors are the heartbeat. And when you got a real one, you better hang on to it. Hmm. The moment, like some folks said a couple of weeks ago, I need another pastor, and you're still sitting here, you're done. Done. See, the only reason you're sitting in here is because the devil in you is trying to convince other people to say they need another pastor. That's the only reason you're here. What other reason can you be here? If you cannot believe in your man of God, you cannot be what? Established? Uh-uh. Can't prosper. You're stuck. You're going to say, I need another pastor. And the reason why I know is because you, you, you're a gossiper. Because somebody told me you said it. That's gossip. I always remember the 11th chapter of the book of Numbers. And when the people complained, they displeased the Lord. And his anger was kindled with fire. And those that were in the uttermost part of the camp... They got burned up. You better get in the circle. Get in the circle. 
I'm not going to be like Moses. I'm going to the promised land. No, 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 no. Oh. Okay. All right. All right, there you go. It's gone. Got to. I never forget, man, people or something. Happened to me a couple times. I said something. I was preaching, I ministered, I said something over the pulpit. And some people weren't here. So people were inside, went back and told them a totally different story. I'm like, really? But you know what? Oh, God, please, please, God, don't do that. You know what? I don't care now. I really don't. I care for my people that love me. I love my enemies, but I care for my people that love me, and I love them back, and those that are for ministry and for the work of God. I'm not about, I told y'all, hey, don't get me wrong. God going to bless you with some stuff, but I ain't, that's not where I'm at right now. I want to see people saved and get into the kingdom. Yes. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I need to see, I need to see the miraculous power of God save people that, that you think that you don't qualify to be saved. I'm talking about the people you see on the corner drinking and smoking and uh, gang banging and all that. Oh, no, nah, they'll never. No, 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 no. God did not limit his power to just the ones of us that's sitting up in here. Because the truth of the matter is because we've been saved so long, we forgot where we came from. Because some of us was doing some tough stuff. And you try to get it out your memory. But it's still there. And so you never look down on a man. Because God is going to save people, and they're not going to look like you, you look. And you got to leave them alone. Leave them alone. Because I'm telling you, I told some brothers the other day, there's going to be a possibility, a grand possibility, that somebody's going to come from the club. They're going to leave the club at 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. They're going to hear a commercial from Scripture Cathedral, and they're going to pull up in here, and they're still in their club clothes. And y'all going to be looking at them funny. No. No, let God do that. It'll, it'll, it'll work out once he saves them. It'll, it'll fix it. They, 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 see, they're they going to have the perfect analogy of the woman that said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. I don't care what people say about me. I know what I've been through. I got to get to him. And we got people sitting right in the church that's trying to stop people from getting to God. Who are you? The heavenly police? My God. If the truth of the matter is, let me tell you about yourself. That's the truth of the matter. That's right. So too many, too many people that's already in think they got it made. They lie. They steal. They cheat. No. Leave folk alone. Let God deal with them. I'm telling you, that's the way it's going to be. It's sad when people come into ministries and they already know certain things about certain people in the ministry that just got here. How? How? All I want you to know is, and you got to remember this, all of us were sinners that were saved by grace. So give them a chance to get their grace. That's what I'm saying. Give them a chance to get their grace. You got to understand that. Truth of the matter. Let me keep talking about the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter, y'all, some of y'all got somebody staying at your house and ain't supposed to be there. Some of y'all shagging, but you come in here and shout and running. So I know, I, listen, listen, listen. When it comes down to this office, God has given me discernment. I know. I know. I know somebody. I, it's, it's, it, I know people that really want to change, and I know people that it's hard to change. There's a difference. You got people that want to change, it's hard to change, and then you got people that's just going to keep doing what they're doing no matter what and still come in here and speak in tongues and shout and run and dance and then go back out there and live like hell. I know it. You want me to point them out? I know. I know. Don't ever, listen, this is another, don't ever put God on, huh, on a, uh, a schedule. Y'all got to hear where I'm saying, oh, I'm going first Sunday, but I ain't going second Sunday. Don't put God on a schedule. What if he interrupts your schedule? Y'all don't get it, man. A tree can fall into your house. 
A fire can break out while you sleep at night. When the further you get away from God, you're losing that protection. You gotta understand that. You're losing it. That's all I'm saying. I don't know why I went this way, but you got to. You gotta love everybody, man. You got to. You gotta love people. It, 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 you can't listen. I'm gonna go out on the limb and elders and ministers tell me if I'm wrong. I don't care how much you speak in tongues, but if you don't have love, what's gonna happen? Can you go to heaven? You think God want people up there like they are some of these people? Do you? Why would he want the same commotion up in heaven? Come on, man. Y'all take this stuff for a joke. I'm trying to tell you, it's not like that. God is a God of peace. He loves everybody. For well, God so loved the world, he gave his only. Who does that? Who does that? He wouldn't even let Abraham finish. The sacrifice. He always have a ram in the bush. Who does that? Again, who wouldn't serve a God like this? All I'm trying to do is get you to trust in him. Trust in him. Okay, I'll, I'll say this. Have you ever tried to trust in other stuff and other things, other people? Did it work? You turn it over to God, and you saw it turn around, right? So why do we, Minister Sean, Elder Johnson, why do we forget the power of God when we get on our feet? Why? Why do we do that? Why do we forget? The same God, he's the same yesterday, today, and the same God. We forget. He bought me out. I'm out now. It. You know how you forget? You forget when you don't praise God. You sitting down like you've arrived. I don't care how high I go in ministry. How how I go in Christendom. I always want to praise God. You got to have that mindset. As a matter of fact, see, people don't understand the higher you go, the harder they get. To whom much is given, much is required. Well, Y'all don't believe that, okay? I ain't sorry you don't believe it. Let me give you a $10 million house. And see you handle the utilities. Yeah. The water. Yeah. That's right. The upkeep. Yeah. To whom much is given, much is required. So I know, I know, I know I got a lot on my plate because all the people that I, I see in my mentality, in my mind, what God is getting ready to do, I have a lot on my plate. But I got to have some servers. Oh, y'all see? Got to have some servers. That's right. Servers. Moses, you take too much on yourself. Come on, Jethro. Get you some, get you some people. Get you some men. What is it, about 70 of them? Get them. But I don't want anybody. I'm going to say it for my, I don't want, I don't want anybody on my ministerial board no more. I don't want anybody on my deacon board no more. I don't want anybody on my missionary board. I don't want nobody ushering, nobody singing, no one. Get you, seven. But there's a condition. They have to have your spirit. Got to have your man of God's spirit. Got to. Got to. I think I got a pretty good spirit. I, I know somebody's cell phone bill is paid. <laughs> At least two people in here. <laughs> I'm done. But remember this. Trust in God.
Isn't it amazing? On the back of our money, what does it say? In God we trust. And here we are Christians. And we are little, ah, got to put all your trust in him. Everything you do, trust him. It might seem stupid, but watch what happens when you start doing it. I've learned, deep convincing, I learned over my six going on seven years, I had to learn to trust in him. I know, I know, I know what the devil and people wanted for Scripture Cathedral, but I kept, I kept pushing, kept pushing. I kept trusting in God, kept trusting. I, I had to. I knew what his plan was. I knew. But I knew what the plan of God was for this ministry and, and myself, too. And guess what? He ain't, through, he ain't through with me yet. Because when he get through, y'all will know. He ain't through with me yet. Still got some time. I'm going to take advantage of it. Let's give God a hand. <laughs> Don't forget this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock. Right here at the Scripture Cathedral, 7610 Central Avenue in Landover, Maryland. We're going to have a time. The First Lady will be ministering. I want you to come out and hear this great woman of God. Let me ask, I can ask, I can ask our audience. Can she preach? Yes. Uh -huh. So I want you to come out. This Sunday, it will be a great move of God here at the Scripture Cathedral because even when the devil, others try to stop the glory, I make sure I bring the glory in the house. If I have to bring it by myself, I'm going to bring it in here. Got to make sure you have the glory in the house. The glory, that's how we live. That's how we stay alive with the glory this Sunday. If you need more information or directions, you can simply dial 301-333-5300. Get a counseling device, go to extension 202. Someone will get back with you. Also, drive through prayer. The ministers are doing a fantastic job. The deacons are doing a fantastic job with it. So we want you to, if you need prayer and you're in the area, some of y'all don't live too far. Some of you got to drive this way to go. Wherever you're going, if you need prayer, just stop by 7610 Central Avenue in Landover, Maryland, and drive through. I want, I want some of you all to stop and come in and worship and praise God with us. Never forget this. When you come to Scripture Cathedral, there's conditions. There are at least one. That is that you have to bring your praise with you because we are the Praise First Church. I want everybody to get a seed tonight. Listen, this is a way, too. This is how you trust them, too. See, some people say, I can trust them with everything but my money. No, you got to trust them with everything. I want everybody tonight to plant a seed of $1 million. <laughs> Y'all laughing. One day, they gonna, it's going to happen. Ah, it's going to happen. No, I want everybody to plant a seed tonight of $13. $13. $13. You can do it several ways. It'll be on the screen. Let me see if I can tell you. Maybe you, you can't see the screen too good. Um, you can give it through our website, which is www.scm.church. Once again, that's www.scm.church. Click on online giving, and then you can donate the amount that you would like to, mount tonight, to, to donate tonight. I'm asking for $13. You can go to PayPal, which is paypal.me forward slash SCM Church. That's paypal.me forward slash SCM Church. And you can do it by PayPal. I'm sorry, Cash App, which is dollar sign SCM Church. Again, that's dollar sign SCM Church. Some people... Um, they try to figure out, what does SCM mean? 
Well, y'all know what it means, right? Scripture Cathedral Ministries. S-C-M. S-C-M. Don't forget, if you would like, I, uh, I am a positive thinker pen that you can put on your lapel um, or on your, where you can put on your blouse, wherever. So you can get it. If you look on the screen, uh, those that are streaming, you can see it. Um, perhaps uh, you can call into the office and you can order it. Um, call in to 301-333-5300. Uh, 202, all right? You can order it. We have a few. So make sure. I know some of you had it. I don't know if you lost it or you can't find it. Or let me, I'm going to tell you what Elder Parker always tell me when I say, Elder Parker, I need this or that. He'll say, Pastor, I didn't lose it. I just misplaced it. <laughs> Trying to save his job. <laughs> nah. <laughs> but make sure. Because this is the day that you have to be a positive thinker. Got to be a positive thinker. Make sure. Make sure you get that. Again, Sunday at 11 a.m. Right here at the Scripture Cathedral. 7610 Central Avenue. Landover, Maryland. Don't let you go because I haven't eaten yet. Anybody else haven't eaten yet? I got to get home and then I can sit back and watch the Cowboys tonight. <laughs> Football season is coming back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this, oh, you see, some people think all I do is pray and, and preach. Oh, I have to enjoy life, too. I have to enjoy life, too. Thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you for viewing tonight. Please like our page, comment, subscribe, share. Hey, look, and go to Instagram. Instagram, our Instagram page. We had uh, one clip up. It had over 146,000 people to view it. That's right. So go to it. Um, it's mine. It's Pastor Donnell Long. All together, Mr. Donnell Long. First Lady got a page, too. I don't know if they can put that on the screen so people can get that. But you can follow us there, and you will be able to see what's coming up at Scripture Cathedral. Some people, um, that's how they get the advance notice. They look on, on our um, Instagram. I don't know. They... It, now, the young people, or at least my daughter, they're trying to get me to do a TikTok. What is a TikTok? A TikTok. And, you know, and it, it, it'd be fresh for church now because there's not too many churches using it. Mm. Oh, this is the world that we live in now. We got to use every means that God has provided us with. So follow us on that. That's Pastor Donnell Long. That's the Instagram. And what is yours? Lady D. Okay. You can follow us. Um, I'll perhaps get somebody to put it on our um, Facebook page so you can just click on it. All right? And again, I want you to remember this. Y'all got to say it with me. It shall be well. It shall be well. Come on, say it like you mean it. It shall be well. It shall be well. Because why? Everything is all right. And how do I know that? I told you a little bit tonight. Why? Because it's already done. Peace.